So if you guys caught my Route 66 trip, you saw that I got to meet up with the man who has actually been up to the Carol Lombard crash site in, well, just outside of Las Vegas. And uh, to my surprise on my Route 66 trip, I did not know that I was gonna meet up with him. I did not know he was gonna bring a lot of the jewelry and things that Carol had with her on that trip, but he did. So I'm gonna share it with you guys in this video. I hope you enjoy it. Days of Jordan the Lion begins right now. We're gonna head off to a historical landmark for a little bite to eat, for a little breakfast. And we're gonna meet up with a friend of Scott's who is offered to take Scott and I out to a very interesting location we've always wanted to see. And he actually found maybe one of the holy grails of lost items ever, Carol Lombard's wedding ring from Clark Gable. So this is our friend Michael. And Michael, do you just want to mention what you do for a living and how you end up with the kind of artifacts that you brought to yeah. show us? So um, yeah, I'm a, I'm a, I work for the FAA as an accident investigator and um, um, aviation historian part-time is what I do on, on my off hours. But um, I, generally I, uh, I uh, research and write about accidents and uh, this is uh, the Carol Lombard accident, one of the ones that I've profiled a lot of. And you've been up there several times and it, one of the cool things you offered to take Scott and I someday when we're ready yeah. to go and you brought her ring and actually two of her rings that you, that you found the wedding yeah, two, ring two of her rings and uh many other items that are uh um uh that used to belong to carol lombard and, and or her mother yeah who was also on the flight with her yes. that is amazing is there an inscription there's an inscription isn't there mm -hmm. wow you found this yourself right oh yeah that's yeah. amazing all of this i can't believe i'm holding carol's wedding ring but you know what's even more amazing is I don't know how you could have found this because this almost doesn't look like a ring. It's so small that I would have, you know, I would have almost thought it was like a keychain ring or something. It's just so thin and everything, but wow. There you can see the inscription very lightly. I believe it said All My Love Clark, right? Uh, it just says All My Love, and then it has the, the date 3-29-39. That's amazing that you can see that. <laughs> Trying to show you guys the inscriptions. There she is wearing her wedding ring right there that we were just holding. And then you said that this ring was the one that she was wearing when she signed her yep. war bonds. Correct. So she, and you said that she actually wore this ring with the wedding ring on the same finger? Yes, yeah, she, she uh, occasionally wore two rings on, the, on her her uh, wedding ring finger. Three 18 karat gold bracelets. She wore um, matching earrings. Oh, with this ring? Karat gold. And this this ring is 18 karat gold. That is amazing to see. It even has like the bend from where she would have wore it. This is the one she wore with her wedding ring. And then that is a CG, Carol Gable. What is that, a cufflink or like a pendant? That um, was probably something that was uh, put on a case that maybe it, because it's platinum and those are identified by GIA as Burmese rubies. Oh, okay. So oh, that's rude. This, was, this was probably maybe a case for the skyrocket clips, I'm thinking, or it could be a cigarette case. Well, I don't know because it, it, I don't believe so because the way it's the way the uh, the backing is on it. You can see where it was attached to the, maybe a box of, or a case of some kind of... Oh. That's a ruby, you said? Yeah, these are Burmese rubies. Oh, that's what you're looking at, the, the Carol Gable. The CG, yeah. Yeah, that's so cool. Um, it so, might like you so said, it might... Of the accident, she was really going... Um, I mean, she was building, you know, on screen as Carol Lombard. But, um, she always went by Carol Gable personally. Carol Gable, it's true. Gable. Yeah, she was very proud to be his wife. Oh, and you said that was on her purse? Yes. Like a little, oh, oh yeah, the CG, I see it now. I didn't understand what that was. So there it is, there's that CG on her bag, that purse or whatever that she's she's holding, that's that. That's incredible. Not plated. <laughs> right there on her bag, that is, that's amazing. Yeah, there's no question. Bonhams put a 
at auction estimate of eight thousand on that. You said that was Carol's mother's wristwatch. Yep. Wow. And this, and the back of the watch was engraved. This is a platinum watch. This is crazy. Yeah. With um, diamonds and uh, I think. I'm gonna have to put it in something where I'll be able to see it. <laughs> Mother dear, always me. I say the diamonds like on that. Some, excuse me, something like that. Mm -hmm. What's the, the diamonds most? on that? These yeah. cases are all <laughs> things that he's found at that particular Carol Lombard crash site. Or, including like diamonds and rubies, just the gems. Is one of Carol's ear clips. Oh, wow. And is this, this is, has been... Is this that is, one she was wearing at the time or from the luggage, would you guess? I don't know if she was wearing it at the time of the accident. Um, but it was probably in her luggage, I'm thinking. Wow. It's amazing that you found so much stuff. I mean, for so many... And didn't sell it. Tim, for so many years, the rumor was that uh, that they um, that, that he only buried a earring since all they ever found of her in her casket. That was the rumor I always heard, of course. I never heard that. It sure. might have been the, like the other word of this. He gave her here an earring. No, she gave him one before they left and said something poetic like, "We will when there's pair, this pair together again, we'll be together or something. So he all he had was his earring and he buried it and that was all that was buried. This is that urban life. You said she wore this one in like just about everything that she did. Mm -hmm. That's crazy. Mr. and Mrs. Smith and wow. Fragments of this range finder up there. And you think they just weren't using it? Yeah, I don't know. Um, they had one, but I if mean... If they but... had used it, they would have, and it was run operating correctly, and and, uh, and in the report, the long version of the report, they they talked about it, and they said, no, the other pilots that flew that airplane before the accident said there was nothing wrong with the range finder. That was one of the and I've got a, even a better picture of her with this ring that shows actually the detail. And That's amazing. That, so. so you said it was like decades later that you actually oh, yeah. found the, the place, the yeah, setting. Yeah, some of these things, you know, were Not found, be. you know, 20, 30 years apart, you know. And that's the ring she's wearing right there. I almost threw out that setting, you know, when I first found it. It looked like just... No a, kidding. It looked like just a crumpled piece of old wire. Yeah. I'm like, and then I, I kind of, I think I might have even tossed it aside. And then I, I got to looking at it, and like the details a, of it being a, that's a that's a ring setting. And I'm like, oh man, that's the that's the ring. So in that picture of Carol, that's the ruby ring that he found and has in pieces. The diamond solitaire earplugs, and they were found probably about two months apart. I found one, and then I found the other. And wow, intact. One carat, one carat diamond on each one. <laughs> wow. Um, VS1 diamonds, which are, that's not K jeweler stuff. That diamond, wow. You said it's called an Eng old English cut? Yeah. Flawless, you said, wow. The ring oh, it's got one in it. It's okay. got one in it. So this is the ring you found, but you said you're not sure. I found like a month later. It's Carol or her mother's. And both, and all, all these stones are, are um, like high grade star sapphire um, from Sri Lanka. Oh, really? High quality. Yeah, the, the setting itself is platinum. <laughs> and the most valuable stone, I think it was valued at like between 25 and 30,000, is this one. It's a um, purple star sapphire that went into the center um, mount here, mm -hmm. and um, they kind of way they grade these in value is if the if the stone hasn't been heated and it's a natural purple sapphire, the price is like three it goes three times higher than one that's been. Wow. Heated and, and the color's been changed. And this would have went in the ring that's in your hand, you think? Oh yeah. Yeah, so this is the uh, this is the setting. And you can and you can see the ring size is, oh, yeah. is very close to what Carol, what Carol would have worn. Mm -hmm. But I don't have a picture of her wearing that ring. 
And there's very yeah. few of her mother, so. Yeah, wow. I'll give you time. You'll find it. I, I have a feeling if there's a photo that exists of her wearing it, you'll find it. Or her mother. I don't know how many times I picked up a little ruby. Little pieces of glass thinking it was something, but it wasn't. That's what amazes me also, like how small this is and that you found this. I mean, just look at my thumb compared to like I mean getting right up and looking at wow. lots of dirt. Yeah. Pendant that. <laughs> that's from the uh, says defense saving staff. So this is this is uh, something from the related to the war bond tour. Yeah. It was either given to Otto Winkler to wear on his suit so you could gain admittance into some of these Yeah, that was Clark's best friend, actually. Mm -hmm. Or it was given uh, to Carol to give to Clark. Oh, okay. Very cool. Did I yeah, see that? They were, wow. They were, they were only given to people that, were, that had something to do with the, uh, uh, you know, the, the sale of defense funds. Incredible. And those, I imagine, are the real deal. Those are real. Not everything I, I re that's up there I recover. You know, there's, uh, yeah, there's some engines up there. <laughs> yeah, I mean, every, you know, everything. But it's um, but it's something that uh, you know I, that I kind of archive and uh, collect. So there's um, actually thousands of pieces that I have. Oh wow! This is just a small. Other personal effects. You know, these are just. Uh, these are just the personal effects, you know, that probably belong to two or three people. Yeah, these are just Carol and her mother, I've which... Got, uh, I've got other items that I've found. Other I found. I seriously think, you know, if, if you wanted to or if somebody was... In, you could do a museum on this crash with what you have. I mean, that's yeah, really amazing. Because you, like I said, you know, you, any one of these yeah. items could have been sold for so much money, but you've kept it all together as a collection that tells a yeah. story. So being that we're on Route 66, I thought, you know, we're coming through Kingman, why not share, since we're talking a lot in the vlog about her ring, where she put the ring on. It would have been here. This was, at the time, St. Joseph's Church. And Clark and Carol came and were married here. The uh, Now it's the Public Defender's Office, but they have a historical plaque here that tells about them getting married here. And that was, you know, that was a big thing because when they met, Clark was already married. <laughs> but on here you can, uh, you can see it was St. John's United Methodist Church, built in 1917. Then down the very bottom it says movie stars Clark Gable and Carol Lombard were married here on March 29th, 1939. Yeah, they were, um... Even though he was already married, he was married to an older woman named Rhea Langham, who they got along great. And she had sons, and he liked being kind of like a stepfather, but really he only married her because she was really rich. And <laughs> he didn't have a huge contract with studios yet, so he just kind of figured, well, I don't need to be in love. I'd rather marry for money. And then he met Carol. He met Carol at a dance, and they danced in front of everybody. <laughs> And it was no secret that they were they were in love. And she learned and knew about all of his kind of oddities. One of them being since his mother died when he was young, his father. And he used to work really dirty, filthy jobs like in mines and oil fields and stuff. And he would say, or I would read in books, that he would work while someone else slept in his bed. And then when his shift was over, he would go sleep and someone else would go work. So it was always a dirty bed and he always felt really dirty so he didn't like any kind of dirt and so she would if if she was going to do any kind of remodeling to the house she would always do it when he was away on location so that he didn't have to deal with the mess she said he didn't mind having changes or anything done but he didn't want to see the mess from it and so right before he would come home from a trip she would get white gloves and she would clean the whole place herself and check for she would check for dirt and things like that so he would always uh, say in interviews that she could do no wrong. She talked like a sailor cussed. She made fun of him. Um, all that stuff and he took it, he loved it. He thought that she was just so funny and so charming that she could do no wrong. So even when she passed, she was off selling war bonds. And when they finally got married, they got married here 
She put that ring on with the inscription that we saw and really never took it off until that crash. So I figured, you know, since we're on Route 66, we should see where they were married. We're here, they're showing the original building of the church, but they're also talking about, it says during a break from filming with Gone with the Wind, Clark Gable traveled to Kingman to wed Carol Lombard. Serving as best man was his close friend Otto Winkler, an agent with Metro Goldwyn Mayer Studios. Otto was actually on the, uh, he was on the flight that Carol passed away on as well. And it says the Reverend Kenneth M. Engel of the First Methodist Episcopal Church officiated the services. Howard Kate, principal of Kingman's High School, and Reverend's wife served as witness. Huh. Can you imagine those two walking up those steps to get married and same when they were leaving? Well, I hope you guys enjoyed that. You know, it's uh, not a planned thing. We were just actually planning to have breakfast and then he brought all that stuff along so I couldn't help but film it. So I'm sorry about all the music in the background and that it wasn't really too organized, but I just wanted to share some of that with you because that crash is one that's, uh, you know, some people, the Titanic is one that they're really, really drawn to, but being a Clark Gable and Carol fan, this was one that really meant a lot to get to see these items, hold them, and know that they're in a collection of someone who's not looking to sell them. They're all together. They tell a story. So thank you all for watching. I hope you enjoyed this.